it is another demanded video where we're going to discuss about how to upgrade Cisco switches iOS. So there is some prerequisites that we need to know like configuring your Cisco iOS or Cisco devices to work as a TFTP client in order to upload or download file from the TFTP server. So your file may be configuration file or maybe your iOS. So you may have a Cisco switches or Cisco router. You need to know how to configure your device in order to work as a TFTP client so that we can upload and download file from the TFTP server. As well as a TFTP server which can be run on PC or a server and make sure it is up and running. Your firewall is not going to block that particular port. And verify enough resources on switch since we're going to upgrade a new iOS and each iOS has their pre uh, hardware requirement like RAM and flash memory. And we also make sure your new iOS is compatible with your platform or with your switch. So this thing we need, we need to ensure before going to upgrade Cisco switches iOS. So I have ensure everything. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to first let you know, this is my switch where I'm running. Uh, let me show everything. This is Cisco 2960 switch where I'm running iOS 12.2 actually. So this is the iOS. It is actually 12.2 but I want to upgrade it from 15.0 which is the latest one. So before going to the actual configuration I also need to enable my TFTP. So I have already installed a program or a software which is working as a TFTP. So make sure you have installed that one. So this is the new iOS which I want to upgrade with. So this is located my uh, my desktop. So I'm, I'm going to change the directory of TFTP server. So please take data from the desktop and it going to work on my network interface card 192.168.1.11. So before going to the Furthermore, I would like to verify the IP. So IP config, there is a command which we can use to verify the IP address. So this is my IP address as we can see. And now rest of task going to be done on switch. So on switch, there is a, we need to enable VLAN interface one or you may have another VLAN, but make sure that that is up and working. So in my case, I'm going to use VLAN interface one and IP address 192.168.1. Let's say it is 115 along with submit mask. No shut down. Excuse me. And I, I, I would like to test whether we do have a connectivity to my TFTP server. So my TFTP server has IP address 1.111. So as we can see, my switch is able to ping to my laptop. So let me let me show you actually. This is my topology where I have a switch and I have a my terminal server or a TS. So console cable goes to my terminal server and uh, there is another switch which is my, uh, my production network. I'm connected with my production network switch along with the switch which I want to upgrade the iOS. And, uh, and I also connected with my terminal server so that I can take the console. Since uh, in my laptop there is no console port, that's why I'm going to take console from the TS. So now I am able to ping from my switch to my laptop where I'm running a TFTP server as well. So next thing I'm going to copy TFTP file and we want to put it on flash. 
So this is the source location TFTP and we want to put that file into flash. Make sure you have a enough uh, memory. In my case there is and uh, we need to specify the TFTP server IP address which is 192.168.1.11 Likewise what file are you looking to copy? In my case this is let me control C for copy and paste on the CLI and it is bin file actually and now what file name you want to put on your flags so on my laptop this is the name and you can change the file name of uh, on flags actually but I'm not going to do this so now it's going to access TFTP server and going to upload, excuse me, download a file. So it may take a little bit time and as we can see this is going on and uh, there is statistics. So it may take a little bit time. Mean, meanwhile I am going to pause the recording. So now it's completed as we can see it taken approximately uh, 120 5 second which is approximately 2 minutes. Now we can verify using so flash command whether we have successfully copied that file. Yes, as we can see. So this is 15.2. Now next thing is we need to change the default boot file. So there is a command boot system and then we need to specify the name of iOS. In my case this is this is 15.2 and let's say so boot I think there is a command so boot system or so boot only so boot so now we're going to boot from this iOS we also need to save the setting so I'm going to copy running config to the startup excuse me and then I also need to reload in order to boot from new iOS. So I'm going to reload operating system. So again it's going to be take a uh, couple of minutes or couple of seconds in order to restart. Meanwhile I'm again going to pause recording. So now it is almost uh, rebooted. One more thing I would like to mention uh, you may you may put multiple iOS and you can boot from the specific. In my case, I have a 2 iOS, which is 15.2 and 12.2. So now, we also need to verify whether we have boot from the new one. So right from beginning, as we can see, after rebooting, we are going to boot from 15.0, excuse me, 15.02, and then there we go. So it's going to perform post and then after let me verify the current boot status. So this is the software version, this is the platform. So what's up? Now we can see we have both of version 12.2 which is previous one and we booted from this one which is 15.0 like we can also execute command so boot so boot file is 15.2 so this is the way where we can uh, use, where we can upload iOS file from the TFTP server using the VLAN interface one or some other VLAN so that we can communicate with TFTP server and this is all about.